every day I hear, I hope I am worthy to be taken in the rapture. I hope I am worthy to be saved. I hope and pray that God will save me. My friends, in these last moments, we are continuing to fight the battle that began as soon as Jesus died on a cross for our sin and rose again. And that battle is a battle between faith and the law. From Genesis to Revelation, it has always been by grace, through faith, through believing God, that anyone has been saved. That anyone has been saved. From the story of Abraham in Genesis 12 through 15, we see Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And it is the same now. If we believe God, that He so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have eternal life, then we will be saved. It will be credited to us as righteousness because of our faith, not because of our goodness, not because we're keeping the law, not because we are righteous, or blameless or sinless Jesus did it all before he took his last breath on the cross he said it is finished and he now wants us to rest from our work to rest in his work on the cross and if you will do that you will be saved this is Paul in the book of Philippians telling us how to stand firm. Already the Torah keepers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, of which Paul was one, a Pharisee at one time, are coming back in and saying, what Jesus did was not enough. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to keep the law. You've got to keep the commands. You've got to keep the Sabbath. But that's not what God's Word says. Yes, if we love Jesus, we will obey Him, but that doesn't save us. It doesn't secure our salvation. It doesn't earn it or deserve it. If it's not because of our love for Jesus, then it is as filthy rags before the Lord. It is only our faith in Christ that earns us anything. It is by grace that we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves but it is a gift of God and not by works lest any should boast this same Paul that we're going to read his qualifications said may I never boast in anything but the cross of Christ Philippians 3, starting in verse 2, he says, Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, the circumcision group. For it is we who are the circumcision of the heart, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Please hear that. No confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence, he says. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, for zeal persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. Remembering, it's the heart that Christ is looking at, not the outward expression, not what we do on the outside. But whatever was to my prophet, this is Paul, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss. All those things he just listed. The list I've heard here on TikTok and elsewhere, keeping the law, knowing the character of God, 
reading the Word of God on a daily basis, going to church, becoming sinless, all of these things. My friend, if righteousness could be gained by keeping the law, then Christ died for nothing. If righteousness could have come by a law, then it would have, it says in Galatians 3. But it was impossible because all have sinned. Romans 3, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by keeping the law, but rather through the law we become conscious of sin. Same thing Galatians 3. We hear the law, we go, oh my goodness, I'm a sinner. That was the purpose of the law, to make us aware of the fact that we are sinners in need of a Savior. Back to Philippians with Paul. Again, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. People are striving and working and are tormented by their own unrighteousness, by their own failings, by their own sin. Afraid they can't be saved. Afraid they're going to lose their salvation. Afraid they're going to be left behind at the rapture. Jesus wants us to rest in him. He says, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. No one will be declared righteous in his sight by keeping the law. If we love Jesus, yes, we will obey him. But if we are obeying him, in an attempt to earn, deserve, or secure our salvation, all that we are doing is a waste of time. Anything that is not a result of faith is sin. If you think you can add anything to what Jesus did on the cross, then you are not understanding Calvary. You are not understanding that that was God in the flesh atoning for your sin. The Son of God taking upon himself the wrath of God the Father for the sins of the world on our behalf. If we can go to the foot of the cross and not be changed and not be grieved, by our sin, then we are thinking we are good enough to earn our own salvation. And my friend, none of us are. I am sure that everyone watching this video is far more righteous than me, did not bring to the cross the mountain of sin that I did on February 4th, 1996, but that is irrelevant. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Only the blood of Jesus can cover your sin. Please trust in His work and cease from trusting in your own. Rest in Him and you will gain that peace and confidence that you are seeking after. Rest in His work, not yours, not yours.